James, Marshall, and Dawson are questionable. Everybody else is good to go. Good. Yeah, he's good to go. Uh, he may not. Uh, possibly. It depends how the game goes. Yeah, I just I found that out before practice today. That's that's good. Um, Jano's good at his position. Great guy. Great type of guy you want on your team. And um, glad we're moving forward with him. How good of a fit is he for what Rich wants to do? He is a good fit. You know, he can. He's a good blocker. He can catch him the ball when we need to call on him for that. And he's uh, can play multiple positions. He can play like the second tight end too if we needed him to. Uh, he, he didn't play a whole lot last week, so incomplete. Yeah. Yeah, he did talk to the team for a few minutes afterwards, uh, which was good. And I told the uh, Champ Bailey story that he almost was an Indianapolis Colt back in 1999. He, I, I was with the Colts then. I had just gotten there. They had been uh, very bad on defense the prior two years, I think finishing last or second last in each year. So part of the negotiation to go there, they promised me everything would be for the defense in the off season. So after going through the draft prospects, I think we had the fourth pick it was Champ who I wanted and we were going to get. You know, it was pretty set in stone who one, two, and three was going to be. And then a day before the draft, uh, they come in and tell me they just traded Marshall Falk to the Rams, which you know how big he was with the Rams in their run there. And now we needed a running back, so we weren't going to draft Ch Champ. We drafted Edger and James, who was a terrific player. But Champ almost was a Colt. And uh, he didn't even know that story. He was traded for Edgerine James and, and then Clint Force. He's a pretty good running back. Yeah. What do you remember about him? Champ? Uh, complete. You know, obviously, everybody's looking for big corners, but they don't grow on very many trees because it's hard to be a big corner and mirror these receivers in the league. But he had the size and the mirror ability and the speed to cover anybody. And when you have that, you're a 12-time Pro Bowler. You're a first ballot Hall of Famer. When you scouted him back in 99, where did he stack up compared to other corners you looked at over the course of your career at that point? Um, you know, I, I can't remember that far back, but it, I was standing on the table for him for the fourth pick, so that ought to tell you. He was, it was an easy evaluation. With a guy like Sense about who's played 100 games, it does, but it's still a curve. You know, the guy just got here, what, three days ago. So, and it's more a curve on the nuances. You know, every defense that everybody plays, there are some similarities, but there's different nuances. And, you know, we're just going to have to fight through that. How's he look this week? He's done all right. It's probably uh, easier to learn outside. Okay, thank you very much. Peter. All right. As a special teams coach, given his leadership and all that. Invaluable. You know, his production is outstanding. His, what he does in the room, he's always the first guy in the room. He's always the last guy to leave. So now you got all these rookies that are emulating him. So there's a lot of guys. The best thing to say about Andy Janovich is everybody wants to be Andy in our room. I don't know if you can give a bigger compliment than that. Well, and then when... They see him get a new deal, but obviously guys work back in the roster with love. Does that you think motivate them even more to you know that they do the job work like him and they get your reward? Yeah, I gotta be honest, I don't know if he I don't I'm I'm one of those guys that doesn't look in the media, so if if he got a new deal. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't want to be that guy, you know. So yeah, congratulations. You know, it's one of those things where that's earned and it's deserved. But uh, I, I didn't even know that. So congrats to Andy. That's awesome. Um, Vic was pointed out Deontay's decision making uh, yeah. the punt return game. What have those conversations been like with him this week? Be more aware Hard, yeah. tough. 
You know what I mean? I mean, we got, you can't do that. You get your heels on the 10 and the ball goes beyond the 10, you go block. You let the ball hit the ground and if they make a play, they make a play. But you go block the guy. There's no gray area. That's why your heels are on the 10. So he's got to make better decisions. You can't put us in that situation. He wants to make a play, but the play you make is a 20-yard return versus a – he'd have to get 14 yards from where he got it to get a free run, you know. So bad decision by him, hard conversation, and he needed it. And uh, I think this player will respond. When you have that conversation, if you ask him why or is it now that he's done it twice, it's just, okay, you can't do that anymore. Yeah, I don't ask. I tell him, to be honest with you, you know, what he needs to do, and then we – put him out here even more than the week before and you go fix. I think it's like anything else in life. The only way they're going to fix it, you keep putting a guy in that situation, put him in that situation. And you got to break a habit that, that came from, you know, his past. You know, it's, it's hard to, your mind's like, if I let this ball hit, that's one point, you know, so we got to get that out of him. But uh, I think it's out. If he breaks that habit, if he breaks that habit, what's his ceiling? He broke the habit, so his ceiling is this guy. It's over, fixed. He doesn't have any excuses, none. It's a punt return touchdown. Keep you awake. I still haven't slept. You know, at the end of the day, that's that's on us. We, you know, we, that you can't give up points. And it brought them back in the game. That's the big thing. It gives them momentum, and our defense went out and shut them down. But you know, we gave up a punt return touchdown. Then we missed a field goal. So you get the ball on the thirty, or excuse me, forty-four yard line, and you know that's where ten points came from. So that's all on special teams, and we got to own it. We got to do a better job of leveraging the ball to the sidelines. Starts with the hang time. Give us hang. Great punt out to the edge, but we got to make sure now that we use this 12th man. We let a ball come right back inside of us on a returner the year before that scored three touchdowns up the middle. We know you got to force them to the sideline. There's no excuse. Zero. We got to leverage. We got to play better. And uh, that's something we fixed this week. Period. No excuses. Oh. Dre, Dre's a great athlete now. We got great football players, you know, and the block comes from those guys. And the other thing is you got to look inside and look at what Shelby and Mike Purcell did. You know, they took that guard and basically picked him up so that we can get to what we call the three yard flight line. If you go look at blocked kicks in the National Football League, all you have to look for is there a hand three yards behind where the ball was snapped and where the ball was kicked. So it's 100%. If you can get to that three yard flight line, they're going to block it. And that's our goal. But those guys got him to the three. We always say three, three. That's our biggest motto is it's just a three, three, you know, field goal, get the three yard flight line and knock it down. So there's a lot of guys that got in on that. AJ Johnson's a Mike linebacker that we use like a defensive tackle. He knocked those guys straight back. So it's execution. I know Dre made the play, but Dre's going to point right at those guys first. What is your standard for hang time, accepting hang time? Uh, it's, it's really, it's an easy concept. So if you punt a ball 45 yards and you hit a four or five hang, is 100% fair catch. 46, 46, 50, 50. So it's really easy to just match the tenths. So that's our standard. You know, wherever you hit it, don't out punt our coverage. Now you're going to hit balls with a wind at your back 60 yards sometimes, especially here. You got to you got to get those out to this edge. You got to play the 12th man. You can't put us in the middle of the field, but that's an easy standard I think really all the way through the National Football League. How's Colby done with that? It seems like he had a couple really good weeks and obviously the return is at 100% on him. Yeah, no, he's, had, he's done a great job of getting the ball out to the edge. You know, the Jacksonville game, it's, he was kind of the unsaid hero. I mean, how many times do you get three punts inside the 10-yard line? You know, you only get three most time during the season. So he had a great, great game there, but he had pressure in his face. Can't worry about the pressure. It's like a quarterback trying to make a throw. You know, you got to get that ball up. So there's no excuse. But I think he's playing better. It's just that, you know, he got another touchback. That's the biggest thing that ticks me off is when you're on the 50-yard line. Force these guys to at least drive 90 yards. You know, and he's, that's something, that's the other thing. It's like, Deontay, get the stuff fixed. You know, no excuses. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys.